Okay, it's up now. So do we need to turn off our mics and cameras for it? You could mute on OBS still. Just on OBS. Okay. Ano objective? I don't know. Sabi ni Kenji may copy ka daw. Sabi, sa, ako, sabi ko wala. Si Christ. Hindi ko sure. <laughs> ano objective? May copy ka daw eh. open uh, ang new object ng original file original file wait may FB live ba titingnan ko ay wala pa lang facebook nakita ko ba yun mars mula sa masa dugo sa masa ito ang ating patnubay matibatawag mata yeah. It's working pretty well in my part. No, no. I'm listening with Oh, not at all. It's just the music. Amazing. Good one minute na Yes. Kamusta si Tita Julie? Ha? Ah, mabuti. Okay. <laughs> I think that's a Anusha. Take us. That's a big, big cave. Okay lang. Kita ang pasang banggitin? Kung actually alam ko ano yung meaning ni Kenji kasi hindi ko wala naman ang copy. Pero no ED live. Pero dito ba 'yon? Hindi na nandoon yata sa first part ng PKP.
Wala ata ako nun. Wala din ako nun. Ito ang ating patnubay. Sundin ang buong tatag. Ang linyang pangmasa. Mula sa masa, tungo sa masa. Ito ang ating patnubay. Pwede na ba? Or then you could um notice us when it's already starting. When like we need to start. Yeah. If you're gonna transition it to start, like you know. Yeah. Good afternoon, international comrades and to our migranteng kababayans. Magandang gabi naman po sa inyo dyan sa Pilipinas. We are now on the uh, second episode of um, uh, of our ND Line online uh, for our new series, ano, Marxism and Leninism. Today, we will gonna tackle on um, the National Democratic Line online stand on proletarian, uh, on proletarian stand and outlook, no? Um, so basically, um, if you have friends and families there that is free, currently invite them to watch this live videos para sa mas makabuluhan at malamang tala, uh, discussion with uh, Prof. Joma Season. If you have questions to Prof, just drop it on the chat box or the comment box. And later after the discussion, we will have a question and answer portion in which Tito Jo could answer your question. No? Without further ado, let's start with uh, the discussion again with ILPS Chief Emeritus, Tito, uh, Prof. Joma Season. Hi, Tito. Mapulang pagbati po sa inyo. Kamusta po kayo? Uh, I'm okay. Um, I wish to express warmest greetings of uh, comradeship and solidarity to... Uh, all of you, uh, especially our listeners. Ayan. Tito, for our very first question for this topic, ano, let's start. Why is studying Marxism, Leninism, and Mao Zedong thoughts a basic task of being a communist? At the outset, let me state that the Communist Party of the Philippines origi originally used the phrase Mao Zedong thought, like the Chinese Communist Party, to signify all the major contributions of the great Mao to the development of Marxist-Leninist philosophy, political economy, and social science, and his own signal contributions, such as the rectification movement in party building, protracted people's war, and the theory and practice of the great proletarian cultural revolution. Uh, for the purpose of symmetry, the CPP has used the word Maoism to uh, align it with Marxism and Leninism, um, that was the understanding uh, even uh, in 1968. Um, it is the basic task of a communist as a proletarian revolutionary to study Marxism, Leninism, Maoism as the universal theory of the revolutionary proletariat. Marxism is the stage when Marx and Engels laid the fundamental principles of the theory in the era of free competition capitalism. Leninism is the stage when Lenin developed Marxism in the era of modern imperialism and the world proletarian revolution. Mao Zedong thought or Maoism is the stage when Mao put forward the theory and practice of continuing revolution under proletarian dictatorship through cultural revolution, 
in order to combat modern revisionism, prevent capitalist restoration, and consolidate socialism. Every communist must understand the three stages of development of the universal theory of proletarian revolution, Marxism, Leninism, and Maoism, and learn the basic principles of Marxism, Leninism, Maoism in materialist philosophy, political economy, uh, social science, party building, strategy and tactics, and opposing revisionism in socialist society. Such basic principles ought to be learned soonest by party members after comprehending the constitution and program of the party. For the purpose, I wrote the basic principles of Marxism-Leninism in 1981, in which I described Mao Zedong thought as the third stage of development as I had done since 1966. I see. Tito, then why is um, Marxism, Leninism, and Maoism only true, truly upheld by applying it, uh, this universal theory to the concrete practice of the Philippine Revolution? This universal theory has been developed on the basis of previous studies of nature and society, various forms of societies, and the transformations of one form of society to another. It shows the similarities and differences of the international and Philippine history and situation and the impact of such world phenomena as colonialism, imperialism, and neocolonialism on Philippine history and situation. It has therefore significance and relevance to the colonial and semi-feudal Philippine society and can be applied in the concrete study and analysis of concrete conditions of Philippine society and also upon the concrete practice of the Philippine Revolution. Such basic problems of the Filipino people as imperialism, feudalism, and bureaucrat capitalism are interrelated and interconnected with the history and development of capitalism on a world scale. Spanish colonialism came to the Philippines to impose colonial and feudal rule in connection with mercantile capitalism. U.S. imperialism came on the crest of monopoly capitalism. It is necessary to relate world history with Philippine history and concrete conditions with the guidance of Marxism, Leninism, Maoism, as the universal theory of proletarian revolution. I see. Tito, how do communists develop the correct stand and outlook in studying Marxism, Leninism, and Maoism? Communists must consciously take the proletarian stand and outlook in studying Marxism, Leninism, Maoism. They must accept that the industrial proletariat is now the most progressive uh, and the most productive uh, 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 political force that can lead the Filipino people to victory in the new democratic revolution and to advance further in socialist revolution. They develop the correct proletarian and thus uh, stand and outlook by studying uh, Marxism, Leninism, Maoism, because this provides the most comprehensive and most profound integration of the most advanced scientific knowledge and practice in the service of the proletariat and the proletarian revolution. Uh, MLM integrates philosophy, political economy, social science, party building, the strategy and tactics, and the cultural revolution and the service of the proletariat against the bourgeoisie. All right. Tito, what is revisionism and opportunism, and why do we have to oppose them resolutely? Uh, revisionism involves a systematic departure uh, from and violation of the fundamental principles of MLM. It misrepresents bourgeois ideas as proletarian and socialist ideas. It is the adoption of the bourgeois class stand against the proletarian class stand. The classical revisionism of the Social Democrats in the Second International involved socialist phrase mongering to dress up petty bourgeois liberalism. Modern revisionism, which started in the Soviet Union, involved the abandonment of the proletarian class stand in favor of the bourgeois stand by party and state bureaucrats and intelligentsia. Opportunism has essentially the same meaning as revisionism, but has the nuance of being of a less systematic and less blatant kind of violating the fundamental principles of uh, MLM. 
a right opportunist professes to be a communist, but he adopts a line of capitulating to the bourgeoisie. A left uh, opportunist thinks that he is more communist than others and adopts the language of ultra leftism and the line of acting in the extreme, isolating the Communist Party and bringing about disaster to the revolutionary process. Opportunism of the right or left sort is often cited as political error within the Communist Party in the reckoning of ideological, political, and organizational errors. I see. Tito, why does the duty of a communist to uphold Marxism and combat revisionism uh, not cease for as long as there are classes and class struggle? It is the duty of communists to uphold Marxism and combat revisionism so long as classes and class struggle do not cease. In the Second International, revisionism arose when Bernstein systematically promoted the line that capitalism could peacefully evolve into socialism. And thereafter, when Kautsky made the Socialist Party support the war budgets and aggressive actions of bourgeois states in the name of social chauvinism and social pacifism. In a socialist society, the ground for revisionism was laid when Stalin made the mistake of prematurely declaring the end of classes and class struggle in 1935 after the success of the uh, uh, campaign to establish socialist industry and uh, um, the uh, uh, collectivization and mechanization of agriculture. This tended to obfuscate to obfuscate the persistent old ideas, culture, customs, and habits of the vestigial members and representatives of the exploiting classes, as well as unhealthy petty bourgeois and bourgeois currents among the bureaucrats and intelligentsia who wish to enlarge their privileges against the class interests of the proletariat and other working people. Tito, um, can you explain to us what is the meaning of total and complete service to the people? Total and complete service of communists to the people means being ready to sacrifice one's life, being tortured and imprisoned and killed in the course of the revolutionary struggle. Under conditions of armed revolutionary struggle or otherwise, communists do not expect and are not promised by the party any compensation other than that what is reasonably set and honestly earned. To wage and advance the struggle, every cent is well spent and accounted for. Chasing after high positions, fame or fortune is frowned upon uh, among communists. Uh, recognition, honors and promotions are decided on the basis of merit and bestowed by collective organs and assemblies in order to inspire comrades and the people. The highest honors are accorded to the revolutionary martyrs and heroes. Outstanding thinkers and leaders are recognized on the basis of their works. I see. Tito, what is the meaning of boundlessly valuing one's task? Whatever your task is, whether small or big, uh, at a given time, you must perform it seriously because it is interrelated and interconnected with the tasks of other Communist Party members. If you fail to do your assigned task, you can prejudice or foul up the collective effort of all party members. You can prejudice even the life of your entire collective if you sleep uh, while on guard duty and you fail to sound off the alarm when the enemy is approaching or creeping on the position of your camp. You must be vigilant and diligent for the love of your comrades and the people. I uh, see, Tito. With that being said, Dano Tito, what is the correct outlook of communists towards hardship, sacrifice, difficulty, and towards death? The correct outlook of a communist towards hardship, sacrifice, difficulty, and death is to understand that they arise as a price for making advances and achieving victories against an enemy that can still cause or inflict these and to adopt all measures of being vigilant, being more effective, and avoiding unnecessary sacrifices. Even when communists win victories, there can be certain costs in the course of fighting or as a result of certain errors. 
In any case, communists must honor and be inspired by the revolutionary martyrs and heroes. They must be encouraged to fight even harder and more effectively when sacrifices occur. Errors must be corrected promptly through criticism and self-criticism and adoption of the correct measures. I see. Tito, what is the mass line and the correct basic attitude towards the masses? The mass line is to learn from the masses. Their conditions, needs, demands, and aspirations through social investigation and class analysis. Thus, we know how to arouse, organize, and mobilize the masses more effectively than ever before in accordance with the, the general line and program of the party. What we can learn from the masses can improve our work and style of work and further enrich and substantiate the existing program and the party's stock of knowledge in order to advance revolutionary practice. Revolution is a mass undertaking. It is impossible without the masses rising up and overthrowing the enemy state. I see. Tito, why must a communist become a better in uniting with the broad majority of cadres and members of the party? A communist becomes better in uniting with the broad majority of cadres and members of the party because it is the democratic thing to do and because it is the way to strengthen the entire party and the entire revolutionary movement. If a party member of whatever rank acts in a selfish or arrogant way, Timely, comradely advice and criticism must be made in order to preserve and strengthen unity. Criticisms and proposals must be motivated by a desire for unity and must result in a higher level of unity and strength. I see. Tito, why is it uh, only on the basis of MLM that it is possible to forge a genuine and steady unity of proletarian revolutionaries? MLM is the only basis existent to forge a genuine and steady unity of proletarian revolutionaries because it is the most comprehensive and profound source of knowledge and guidance for carrying out the people's democratic revolution with a socialist perspective in the Philippines. By availing of this theory, it is possible to make new contributions to enrich it and further develop it. There is a wave-like advance in the dialectical relationship of theory and practice, as Mao demonstrated in his theory of knowledge and practice. Tito, what is the correct attitude towards comrades who have an outlook different from ours, those who are like relatively backwards, or if not, those who have erred? The correct attitude is to cure the patient who is sick and help him become a healthy and stronger part of the party and the revolutionary movement. It is a matter of comradely sharing of knowledge and persuasive reasoning to overcome any backward attitude and to correct wrong ideas and actions or any shortcoming. It is the task of more advanced members to educate further those who are relatively backward. Yeah. Errors and shortcomings can be criticized in a timely manner on the spot, and this can also be taken up in timely and periodic sessions of criticism and self-criticism. Tito, why is active ideological struggle most important? And uh, together with this, what is liberalism and what harm does it bring to the party and the revolution? And how do we combat it? Active ideological struggle is important because it is the way to raise the level of revolutionary consciousness and militancy of party members and the entire party. It must always be characterized by comradely discussion, persuasive reasoning, and avoidance of the bureaucratic and bullying style. A stern attitude and stern measures may be adopted only in relation to serious errors that have resulted in serious damage. A full rectification campaign or movement is needed if certain errors have resulted in serious damage on a wide scale for a considerable period of time. In a previous episode, we discussed Comrade Mao's combat liberalism. He pointed out as many as 11 examples of liberalism. These are generally characterized by individualism, selfishness, and disregard for collective interest. 
Sometimes we do not criticize a friend or someone in a higher position for fear of making an offense. A criticism is well done when it is fact-based and a constructive proposal is made to correct it. Mm -hmm. Someone properly criticized can appreciate the criticism if correctly done. In the first place, a good communist must criticize himself upon recognition of his own error for the purpose of instruction, instructing or educating others. Yeah, Tito, uh, with that being uh, tackled, ano, let's uh, go with the question of what is subjectivism and what harm does it bring to the party and the revolution and how do we combat this? Subjectivism means depending only on one's fixed ideas or narrow personal experience. It is uh, dogmatism when one depends on one's fixed ideas and denies or obfuscates objective reality and social practice. It is empiricism when one depends on one's mm -hmm. own sense uh, uh, data and personal experience and denies or fails to take into account the social practice and knowledge of collectives and other people. Subjectivism in the form of either dogmatism or empiricism or is often cited as a major ideological error within mm -hmm. the Communist Party in the reckoning of ideological political and organizational errors. Uh, grave damage is caused by subjectivism of any sort, if allowed to uh, uh, to hold sway in a party. I see, Tito. All right, um, uh, let's move forward, Tito, on why is the communist an internationalist? The communist is an internationalist because he is for the unity of the workers of all countries, in order to ultimately defeat the bourgeoisie completely on a world scale and realize communism as a classless society. Communism is impossible so long as imperialism continues to exist and has the strength to oppose socialism. The communist is for the people's democratic revolution um, and socialist countries to arise, uh, develop and win victories in various countries until imperialism is finally defeated. The proletarian class dictatorship can wither away and communism is realized as a classless society. I see. Tito, what is the outlook of a communist toward nationalism? The communist outlook and view on nationalism is that it is a bourgeois political ideology reflective of the phenomenon of uh, nation states that have arisen as a result of bourgeois democratic revolutions. At the same time, communist and socialist states recognize the principles of people's national sovereignty and independence of nation states against colonialism, imperialism, and uh, uh, neocolonialism. Bourgeois nationalism goes astray when it is used to oppose and attack communist parties and proletarian internationalism and to generate chauvinism xenophobia and fascism. Socialist mm. states cannot wither away so long as imperialism, revisionism, and reaction persist. It is their duty to strengthen the proletarian class dictatorship until all the anti-democratic, anti-socialist, and uh, anti-communist forces are defeated and the classless uh, communist society become realizable. Uh, the socialist state is itself uh, uh, based on national sovereignty in the community of nations. And uh, um, it is uh, 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 superior to a, a narrowly bourgeois uh, uh, nation state. Uh, but uh, uh, the social state uh, uh, must uh, still be based on the principle of national sovereignty in as much as revolution should be to be won within uh, national boundaries. Communists are not uh, advocates of uh, uh, cross-border wars, no? Uh, and uh, uh, the Trotskyites are entirely wrong in saying that uh, uh, it, it should not be won in any single country, but uh, they say vaguely that it should be won on a world scale, no? Mm -hmm. 
I see. I think Tito, that was the last question that um for our discussion. And again, thank you, Tito, so much for um for um um giving us that discussion. You know, to our audience, um again, we are currently discussing the National Democratic Line online, um here in ND Line online, the Marxism Leninism on proletarian outlook and on proletarian outlook and uh on proletarian stand and outlook rather you know? so basically we are discussing this in order to advance the revolutionary uh revolution steadily until victory of course a proletarian party needs to be armed with the revolutionary theory of marxism leninism and mao zedong thoughts rooted deeply among the masses and steeped in self-criticism this party is the vanguard of the working class and represent the con uh, concentrated strength of the class in ideology politics and organization of course to be fit for the revolutionary task party members must be made up the most honest and steadfast element tested in revolutionary struggle against the oppressing and exploiting classes. Every party member must develop their proletarian revolutionary consciousness and remold oneself according to the most basic proletarian revolutionary stand and outlook. The party is now waging the second great rectic, uh, have uh, already waged the second great rectic rectification movement. In essence, it is an ideological movement to overcome the serious deviations and past errors and to strengthen further the fighting capacity of the party and revolutionary movement. This current study of the most basic proletarian revolution stand and outlook aims to strengthen the ideological preparedness of party members in studying um, um, uh, Marx, Lenin, and Mao Zedong thoughts and in carrying out a revolutionary task. And also to impart the meaning of serving the people impart the meaning and the importance of forgiving or forging the revolutionary unity between um, uh, unity of organizations and members uh, and the people and also to impart the necessity of remolding oneself in accordance with the proletarian world outlook through honest self-criticism and active ideological struggle and lastly to establish the proletarian internationalism and the meaning of accomplishing it. So um, um, to our audience, no, given that, no, um, we are now proceeding to our question and answer portion eh, in which uh, you could already ask your question. So basically, you just need to drop your uh, questions to the comment box. So Tito Jo uh, could answer the following questions. While we are waiting for that, uh, no, we will now proceed to our quick break. Um, um, Recently, one of our comrades have uh, passed away, Kim. I know. Um, so basically, we will just have a quick um, um, images and slides. I know. Si Kim po ay isang mahusay na artist and multidisciplinary artist mula clay molding hanggang photography or videography. Naging uh, bahagi po si kasamang Kim sa um, Southern Tagalog Exposure o STEX. Uh, isang national democratic na alternative media alter, al, alternative media based sa southern tagalog um kim stayed here in europe uh, from 2017 and uh, dito na din po siya nagpagamot ng kanyang cancer malaki ang natulong ni kim sa nakbayan europa lalo sa prop hanggang ngayon na ginagamit pa rin natin ang ilan sa kanyang mga posters at ilang kanyang mga uh, gawa flyers at forms na siya mismo ang nag-layout. Hindi rin maramot si Kim sa kanyang talento, mahilig siya magturo at mag-share ng knowledge at skills niya. Higit sa lahat, nakikita ni Kim ang potential sa mga kasama at pinipilit niyang encourage na i-maximize sa mga kasama sa kanilang uh, potential. Kaya uh, pinakamataas na pagpupugay po para sa ating kasamang si Kim, atin pong alalahanin ang kanyang mga alaala sa, para sa ating uh, quick break. Magbabalik po ang ND Line Online. Walang hinahangad, nag 
Merong animation.
masisilayan at ang kahulugan sa mahihirap. Liwanag ng isang bagong bukas, mabuhay kayong mga di pangkaraniwan. Pag-ibig ninyo ay walang hangganan. Mabuhay kayong lubos ang katapatan. Mabuhay kayo kailanman. Mabuhay kayong mga tinang kaniwan. Pag-ibig ninyo ay walang hangganan. Mabuhay kayong lubos ang katapatan. Hello mga kasama. Um, we are now back sa ating um, question and answer. No, uh, you, We are now back sa ating discussion on ND Line Online on Proletarian uh, Stand and Outlook. So again, our floor is still open for questions if you are um, if you are uh, watching, you can ask your questions. Just drop it down in the comment box. But before that, before we proceed to our question and answer portion, um, binabati lang po namin. We are greeting um, all our live audiences. I know we have here um, uh, Tito uh, from Marikit. Uh, uh, Tito Kuya Joma, miss you po. And uh, Tito, uh, we are receiving comments uh, that it's uh, they are um, uh, it is great to see you. No? Uh, isang palabanding araw po para kay Kristen at magandang gabi po sa lahat pati uh, kay Rosalinda ayan po our our our, our, quest, our floor for questions is still open and at ito some questions have already been sent to us from our audience the first question is what is the proletarian stand on criticism and self criticism the proletarian stand is uh, uh, somehow defined uh, by uh, uh, the purpose and uh, uh, what methods should be uh, applied in conducting criticism and self-criticism in order to advance uh, the new democratic social uh, revolution with the socialist perspective or, uh, or what is already a, a socialist revolution. And um, uh, so it's very important to know what the, what is the purpose of criticism and self-criticism. It is to do work uh, better and to fight better uh, for the ultimate aim of socialism. That's the objective of the proletariat. And um, the um, uh, there is the scientific attitude and um, uh, method that uh, uh, must be... Uh, uh, involved. Uh, uh, that's a uh, high level way of speaking, but you know, um, on the ground level of the workers, they do, they are quite uh, uh, scientific uh, in uh, doing things. Um, they did the workers know what are the productive capacity. And then they, uh, in accordance with the productive capacity, they set targets of production. And then um, 
uh, if they fulfill the targets, well, they can congratulate themselves. Uh, if they over fulfill the target, they congratulate themselves more. But if they sh uh, uh, if they uh, fail, uh, they they fall short of the targets. Then uh, there is the ground for criticism. Uh, why is it the target is not fulfilled? Was it uh, overreaching? Was it uh, uh, was the goal over uh, 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 overstated and um, uh, there was an attempt to overreach beyond capacity, or uh, there is the capacity but somewhere along the way um, there is uh, there, there are mistakes committed to prevent fulfillment of the target. No, and. Um, uh, even when you do well in production, uh, you fulfill your target, uh, you can also, someone can introduce the question, we, we could have done better even then. We, we have done well, um, but uh, uh, we can congratulate ourselves on that, but uh, uh, we can, uh, we, by uh, our experience, we have seen that we could have done more. Also, uh, criticism is possible even where achievement uh, has been made. But anyway, anyway, what is the scientific method in criticism and self-criticism? It is based on the facts. You deal with the facts. And uh, uh, as I have already pointed out, uh, you deal with capacities and uh, uh, you set targets and then you evaluate eh? uh, uh, what you have done. Uh, with regard to the target set. So, uh, so long as criticism and self-criticism uh, uh, are based on facts, uh, the quantitative basis is clear, then you can easily uh, discuss uh, uh, the uh, uh, qualitative issues, so to say. Uh, so that is the way how criticism and self-criticism is undertaken. And um, um, uh, there is uh, uh, the, the need for the accuracy of the facts and um, correct estimation of capacity and uh, doing the best you can uh, in order to fulfill reasonable targets. So I think uh, that defines uh, the proletariat uh, uh, because it has to produce things, uh, units of a certain product. Uh, they cannot, uh, they, they are trained uh, by their work uh, to deal with facts. And uh, that's an important thing to consider uh, the scientific um, um, position in you know, uh, in knowing and assessing uh, and evaluating uh, work and struggle, and also what is the purpose. Uh, that is also an important element in considering the proletarian stand, because the revolutionary proletariat wants to go in the direction of the socialist revolution. That's the most essential, uh, the most essential thing. I see. Tito, next question naman, no, from our audience. Why must a communist become a master in unifying the broad majority of the people? If a communist fails to uh, unify the broad masses of the people, then, then he does not have the, he, he cannot uh, lead any large number of people uh, to overthrow uh, the bourgeoisie or to achieve any uh, task that is uh, has that has to be carried out by arousing, organizing, and mobilizing the masses. Um, uh, the the, com the mass campaigns and mo mass mobilizations undertaken to advance uh, uh, the, uh, the revolutionary struggle involve, uh, always involve uh, uh, getting the uh, participation and support of the masses. And as I have already uh, pointed out, yeah. revolution is a mass undertaking. If you don't have the broad masses of the people, with you in the movement to overthrow uh, the uh, reactionary state, then you cannot make the revolution. 
uh, only the uh, masses, uh, you can have a structure of forces, like uh, the masses at the base, then you have uh, 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 organizations uh, and parties uh, that are the, supposed to be the more solid parts of the broad masses of the people, and you have the structures of leadership. But uh, if you don't have that mass base, if you don't have the broad masses of the people, uh, you cannot overthrow uh, the state. You cannot even throw a fascist dictatorship like that of Marcos if you don't get uh, uh, the millions of people in, um, in EDSA and uh, 100,000 people uh, directly surrounding the presidential palace in 1986. Um, the uh, 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 big... Uh, uh, revolutionary uh, actions can be undertaken only with uh, uh, the active participation of a huge numbers of people. I see. All right. Tito, ang susunod naman na question from our audience. This is the third one. Why is the thinking of consciously being a student of the masses, learning from the masses, and consulting with them in facing any matter very important? It is important, uh, uh, really, to be uh, learning from the masses and consulting them uh, whenever necessary and on, on important issues, because that's the way how um, uh, you get to know what the masses uh, want according to their conditions. And um, uh, that's also the way how you get to know uh, people who can uh, organize and unorganize ones who can be uh, mobilized uh, for action uh, to advance the, the struggle. And um, you learn, um, you don't only learn the content, no? the content um, for programmatic action, no? Uh, you don't only improve on that content, but uh, uh, you also uh, learn who are the people mm -hmm. uh, especially the organized ones, uh, that can mobilize more people uh, in order to uh, realize the program. And also, uh, you adapt uh, properly uh, the correct style uh, from uh, adapting uh, the proper slogans to arouse the people and prop agit to, you know, uh, uh, organizing and mobilizing the people. You get to know places, people and places where certain actions can be uh, undertaken in preparation for the big action, no? Mm -hmm. uh, big actions like EDSA, uh, you know, uh, are the result of uh, so many local mass actions. Uh, that's how you get to uh, uh, arouse, organize, and mobilize the people. Then the day, the day comes, the big day comes for a convergence uh, 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 on a place like EDSA, then uh, uh, when you make a call for people to appear, it's because they have been well prepared by uh, uh, pro agit when you arouse and by uh, definite organized forces. And uh, there is general uh, sentiment among the people to join any action that will overthrow what is a hated object. Uh, like a fascist dictatorship or the Duterte or to oust, let's say, the Duterte regime, you, you, have to, um, you have to rely on the masses and try to approach them in, in so many ways, preliminarily, intermediarily, and then ultimately, uh, you will be in a position to call on them to show up at the same place, be it around the palace or uh, uh, somewhere in order to... Um, gather strength, neutralize the reactionary military, and then march on the, uh, and then march on the palace, as uh, um, has been repeatedly done, as in the overthrow of Marcos and then Estrada. That's really well said. Tito, ang susunod naman question from our audience is, why is the question for whom a fundamental and decisive for every proletarian revolutionary? It is important, uh, you know, uh, to know what you are serving. Uh, so it, um, 
um, you uh, join the, the movement um, for whom? Huh? Uh, that goes along with the question for what reason? No? Well, uh, it's for a revolutionary purpose and uh, therefore uh, it, is, it is to serve the people. That's a fundamental question. And um, uh, you also uh, start to define who are your friends and your enemies. And uh, of course, your friends uh, uh, would be summed up as the people, although they may belong to different classes like workers, peasants, uh, urban petty bourgeois, uh, national bourgeois to some extent. No? And then um, you identify your enemies uh, who belong to the majority class, to the minority classes, like the uh, big compradors, landlords, and the corrupt government uh, officials, so the bureaucrat capitalists. <clears throat> so uh, it's, a, it's a fundamental question, very decisive. Um, the, um, in a country like the Philippines, uh, the industrial proletariat is a minority class, although it is the most progressive, uh, uh, productive, and political force. Mm -hmm. So it has to have an, uh, a basic alliance with the peasantry. Uh, this is the basic alliance of the toiling masses. And, um, and these are more than 90% of the people. And then you have the urban intelligentsia, you win them over because they are influential and uh, their uh, intellectual, professional skills and so on uh, are a major contribution uh, to uh, the advancement of the revolutionary movement. And then, uh, with regard to the enemy, uh, you can segregate what you might call the enemy uh, from the other reactionaries by way of split of taking advantage of the split among the reactionaries because you know um, um, part of the crisis is also you know the uh, intensified struggle among the reactionaries so you identify as enemy the worst of them that is uh, usually the one in power and is closest to U.S. imperialism so that's the way how you uh, but you know in uh, gathering the positive forces um, people would mean the basic toiling masses of, uh, uh, of workers and masses plus the middle forces. That's uh, You can call those the people. I see. All right. Atito, there's a, a couple more uh, questions has been sent from our audience, but let's have a quick um, commercial break. Lang, no? uh, we're flagging up the foreign language press. No, uh, this is a publishing uh, website where they sell uh, revolutionary books, no, from different uh, for a variety of authors, not just from Philippines, but also uh, revolutionary ideas from China, from India, and um, uh, across the world. So you could visit flpress.storenv.com and grab your copies of uh, of um, any revolutionary books selected there. So um, yeah, just visit flpress.storenv.com and you could uh, um, get selections there from um, a lot of uh, cheap books. No, it's uh, $5 from $10 um, and they deliver across the world. So visit flpress.store. Dot and that dot store envy dot com. Ano. Now, Tito, uh, let's proceed now to the fourth question. Ano, um, sa ating susunod na question from our audience. This is uh, from Kilaika Anjay uh, Anayejali Shakur. No, Tito, how can black people in America who share the same ideology and party line begin to work closely in alliance with your party? Well, I think uh, 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 black people in America uh, who wish to have an alliance with this uh, Communist Party of the Philippines um, can find out somehow by in, uh, being in the revolutionary struggle within the U.S. Uh, uh, who could be, eh? who could be members of the Communist Party of the Philippines. Because you see, in the US, the, uh, it is, uh, the CPP is uh, um, designated as a foreign terrorist organization no, since uh, uh, 2002. So um, uh, the CPP does not um, 
uh, expose itself easily uh, to people it does not know uh, uh, in the U.S. And the, uh, uh, there are CPP members and CPP uh, organizations in the U.S., but they are more careful than before this uh, terrorist designation. And uh, even before, when the, uh, belonging to the CPP was not outrightly illegal in the U.S., uh, uh, the, the um, uh, CPP uh, uh, members and uh, CPP units uh, uh, were relatively more open, no? Uh, when they recognized that uh, another person belongs to a, a communist or some other revolutionary organization uh, that may not, that are, is not necessarily a communist, they, they easily open up. Yeah? And then, of course, uh, even in previous times, uh, let us say before the CPP established its first organization in the U.S. in the early 1970s, a Filipino communist uh, were careful not to say uh, that they're communists because of the Macaran Act, no? uh, which prohibits foreign communists. All the Communist Party is legal within the U.S. Foreign communists under the Macaran Act uh, uh, are not allowed to enter the U.S., unless the U.S. State Department makes a waiver, you know? It makes a waiver. It does not apply this um, anti-communist, this policy against foreign communists. So now, uh, under the terms of the uh, for, of a foreign terrorist designation, uh, the commun Philippine communists uh, belonging to the CPP in the U.S. are more careful than ever. But, you know, <clears throat> the CPP has its um, uh, has its uh, addresses. Um, it has publications uh, in the cyberspace. Uh, it can be contacted, no, um, somehow. Uh, but of course, uh, uh, it may be easy to make contacts uh, by uh, 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 addressing uh, messages to certain addresses uh, in the internet, but uh, uh, there's no uh, substitute for, you know, actually knowing a particular uh, um, uh, members of the CPP to get in touch with it. And I think, um, you see, uh, when a communist party does its work well, uh, it is very much in the mass movement and uh, it is fractions eh? or groups within mass organizations. And uh, you see, at the core of the mass movement is, uh, is the party of the proletariat, no? aside from a distinctly uh, different entity called the Communist Party of the Philippines. Mm -hmm. So I, I think uh, the most important thing uh, is to remember that the ground for um, working closely in alliance is because uh, the CPP supports the, the struggle of the black people in America. And the people of the, uh, the black people in America also know that the CPP supports them. So there is a basis for them uh, to uh, get in touch with each other and um, uh, discuss and decide uh, what they can do in order to strengthen unity, and uh, make effective practical cooperation. So uh, I think um, uh, uh, in my answer, I cannot give you addresses, sure addresses or sure persons to get in touch with in order to uh, get in touch with the CPP. I think uh, the one asking the question um, uh, should bear in mind that uh, uh, if he does revolutionary work, and uh, he will somehow come across uh, uh, Filipinos, communists, as well as non-communists, who support uh, and ever willing to cooperate uh, with uh, uh, the uh, 
revolutionary organizations to the black people in America. I see. All right. Tito, uh, next question naman. Uh, what is the difference between classical and modern revisionism? And also, what are their similarities? And the difference is that the classical revisionists were described as mere bourgeois tales or our tales of the bourgeoisie in the, in the bourgeois parliaments in Western Europe. Um, uh, you, you know, and they, in contrast, the modern revisionists were um, in uh, socialist societies and were even to be found eh, in the Communist Party and in the socialist state. No, so uh, that's the difference. The classical revisionists, um, like um, um, like Bernstein down to Kautsky. Uh, belong to social democratic parties, uh, which had representatives in the bourgeois parliament. And they were revisionists because they uh, followed the line of the bourgeoisie with regard to war making, colonialism, and uh, they did so in the, uh, um, uh, by invoking uh, uh, social pacifism and social chauvinism. Um, in the case of the modern revisionists, they were inside already the ruling parties and the socialist states. So, um, and the similarities are that they are agents mm -hmm. of the bourgeoisie. Uh, the classical revisionists were agents of the bourgeoisie. Even if they uh, talk socialist, uh, they were using socialist language uh, just to dress up their um, their uh, liberal um, uh, bourgeois uh, uh, subordination to the big bourgeoisie, and um, the revisionist in the, the modern revisionist uh, tried to misrepresent uh, uh, capitalist reforms uh, as the way to advance socialism, and they they describe misrepresented this capitalist reforms as socialist reforms. So uh, the, the similarity is uh, uh, taking the stand of the bourgeoisie against the stand of the proletariat. I see. Next question, naman, Tito. Uh, what is the relationship between left opportunism and right opportunism, such as between adventurism and reformism? And both of these are left opportunism and right opportunism um, are um, political manifestations of subjectivism and they are subdivisions of political opportunism. Um, mm. And uh, I think as indicated by the question, uh, uh, there is uh, a good sense of what the left opportunist is or what left opportunism is. Uh, left opportunist is... Um, uh, is uh, usually adventurism, uh, espousing something beyond the capacity of uh, the uh, revolutionary party at a given time, and in effect actually serving the bourgeoisie. And uh, th th this is what um, uh, Lenin said eh? uh, against Trotsky as a left opportunist. Um, he, talk, he talks ultra-left uh, in order to discredit and isolate the left position and, in a way, support the right. Eh? Because, uh, uh, you know, in, um, in the revolutionary movement, um, a certain amount of daring is important. Mm. But an excess of daring would be adventurism that brings damage to the revolutionary movement. You cannot use the strength of the movement to run it against the wall. Uh, you have to make sure that in uh, uh, deploying the strength of the revolutionary movement, it gains strength and not uh, uh, simply bump. It's not simply a case of daring to bump one's head against the wall. No? 
In the case of reformism, um, uh, again, there is a problem there because uh, the revolutionary party is not against reforms, but it is against the systematic use or invocation of uh, reforms in order to block revolution. So there is a difference. Reforms can advance the revolution, but reformism means uh, it is best to do peaceful reforms rather than going to revolution. Uh, you put uh, uh, there is a, uh, a systematic limitation that is placed by reformism on reforms. Don't go beyond peaceful reforms. Uh, that's the that's the rule of the reformist, and um, and they think revolution is an indefinite, ceaseless process of begging for reforms from the exploiting class. Yeah. So um, uh, I hope that, uh, uh, you know, communists can make mistakes, huh? even uh, when they are um, uh, well-meaning, and but they go astray. Uh, as I've already pointed out, is if... Uh, uh, you are a communist and want revolution, you must have a daring spirit. But watch out, no? uh, you must have daring within the frame of uh, 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 rain within the frame of what is possible and what is to be done necessarily at a given time. Do not go beyond. Eh? Uh, what can uh, advance the revolution? Otherwise, if you work, if you um, act in excess, you can bring damage to the movement. Uh, so, uh, for instance, uh, in fighting, when a superior force of the enemy comes, mm -hmm. uh, it is wise to retreat. No? Watch mm -hmm. your enemy and then uh, look at his weak points and then uh, after after that, you can counterattack. No, but if you just uh, if you have a but if you uh, if you uh, fight a much bigger force, ah, then uh, you are practically uh, uh, prejudicing the movement. No, and in the case of reformism, nothing wrong with reforms um, uh, because they can advance the revolution, but. If it is all that you do, huh, begging for reforms, huh, you don't make preparations, you don't take actions uh, that uh, will increase the, the power of the proletariat and what that will lead to the seizure of political power, then you are a reformist, not a revolutionary. <clears throat> That's really well said. Tito, uh, next question man, from our audience, no? Kristen, Chloe, Tugawin. What is the importance of the youth in joining the struggle for national democracy? Well, uh, it is important because it's the only thing that can be done by the youth under the semi-colonial and semi-feudal uh, conditions in the Philippines. Uh, you have to go for national democracy or for the new democratic revolution um, because uh, you, have to, uh, you have to defeat imperialism, feudalism, and bureaucrat capitalism. Because before you can embark on uh, the socialist revolution. It's a precondition. And uh, through the People's Democratic Revolution, you uh, build the strength uh, mm -hmm. uh, to defeat the, the class enemy and then be able to start the socialist revolution. As a matter of fact, when, you have, when the proletariat all has already gotten power through the People's Democratic Revolution, the Socialist Revolution is uh, the more relative, is the more, is the peaceful process. But the, that socialist state has always to be ready uh, against, you know, um, the intervention of foreign forces or reactionary forces being suddenly armed by the imperialists, you know. Uh, the October Revolution, Socialist Revolution was won in 1917, but then uh, a civil war would uh, follow because the imperialists and the reactionaries would uh, uh, try to organize uh, 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 a counter-revolution. And then the, 
uh, foreign interventionist forces also came. So, it, but anyway, as in China, after the seizure of political power in 1949 through the People's Democratic Revolution, uh, China would be able to um, begin the socialist revolution. I see. All right, Tito, next question naman. Um, to our audience, open pa rin ang ating floor. Um, uh, from Evelyn Kalugay, what is the analysis of the Chinese society at present time? Common knowledge, it is an imperialist, but they always claim that they are on the socialist construction. What do you say about this, Tito? Uh, you know, the Communist Party uh, should be very reflective of the nature of Chinese society. If you know, um, the leaders, um, the, uh, the, the, and the members of the polit political bureau and central committee are billionaires, no? That means, you know, uh, it's no longer the proletariat in power. Mm. Uh, the proletariat was overthrown in 1976 through the coup d'etat made by uh, a combination of, um, of the followers of Zhou Enlai and Deng Xiaoping, with Deng Xiaoping having the most initiative. So by 1978, uh, uh, Deng Xiaoping was already uh, pushing capitalist reforms and reintegration in the capitalist world. And by 1980, Liu Xiaoqi was, uh, uh, Liu Xiaoqi was rehabilitated. And uh, that includes uh, the Wang family, the comprador, you know, uh, during when he was, Liu Xiaoqi was assigned to, to do contact work with the capitalists when uh, the Chinese revolution was about to win. That's how he met the big comprador uh, wife eh, from the Wang, the pharmaceutical and chemical uh, big comprador family uh, of China. So, you know, this is the kind of... Uh, uh, class now in control of China. And uh, uh, can you imagine, Jack Ma, hmm. if, uh, a, a, a multi-billionaire in dollars uh, uh, being a key member of the Communist Party, although now he's in trouble, uh, reportedly in trouble, because he's in conflict with other, his other uh, fellow billionaires within the Communist Party. The Communist Party of China is now controlled by the bourgeoisie. So uh, there's uh, fakery involved, no? Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the case in, in China. And um, the, the best proofs for the change of the class character of the, uh, or, or the uh, character of Chinese society uh, would best be found uh, uh, in the reversals of uh, the line of Mao in every respect uh, uh, from 1976 onwards. I see. All right, Tito, next question naman, ano? Um, from, um, for our next question. Building off the discussion on opportunism, can it be said that left opportunism creates the condition for a right-wing turn-in policy? Failure to achieve quick success leads to compromises in principle and strategy, such as the high tides of the left during Cultural Revolution, followed by the rightist coup under Deng Xiaoping. Yes, uh, the left opportunism can uh, provoke a rightist uh, backlash. And um, you see, um, um, uh, I have written a recent uh, piece on how uh, uh, the left was systematically split by the right. By, uh, but uh, of course there was a uh, there was uh, in certain instances there was a basis for left opportunities to arise and uh, make certain uh, uh, take actions that uh, were not welcome. But I think there was a systematic. Uh, uh, there was a, uh, a systematic uh, um, campaign. Um, well, I might as well uh, relate to you in um, concrete terms. So, um, uh, at the beginning of the Cultural Revolution, Liu Xiaoqi and Deng Xiaoping were part of the decision-making to launch it. 
Then uh, they took actions to counter it. And then uh, the one assigned to lead the Cultural Revolution Group within the, uh, under the Pol political bureau, um, will not uh, take up uh, the issue against the vice mayor who wrote eh, uh, something to, to attack Mao, uh, comparing him to uh, an emperor who knew everything but did not know anything and who uh, unjustly uh, mm, dismissed um, uh, Peng Te Huai, no? yeah, you know, the article carried, uh, uh, that's the usual Chinese uh, literary method of denouncing, you know, you use characters in history. So uh, Peng Te Huai was the one who posed the great leap forward, no, and condemned Mao in 1959. So the, but by 19... Uh, uh, 76, it became necessary to counter uh, the right-wingers within the state and the party. So the Cultural Revolution was supposed to be launched. And uh, Mao uh, would support the Red Guards, uh, the youth, the educated youth and young workers who rose up. And... Uh, uh, there was uh, an element of spontaneity in the um, in the uh, rise up of these uh, red guards. Then eventually the uh, the rightists uh, like Deng Xiaoping, because they had uh, high positions, even if they were removed, uh, they had influence. Uh, they would launch their own uh, uh, red guards. Mm -hmm. in order to misrepresent the, the, the real Red Guard. So um, then they would uh, make an outcry against factionalism and too much disturbance. So even Mao <laughs> would, be this, would, be, would be convinced by his show and lie uh, to, uh, to step back. You know? But anyway, there was, there was also uh, a rebellion of the uh, workers in Shanghai. So they made the Shanghai commune and they overthrew the municipal committee. That was supposed to be a positive thing to do. Uh, but then all those uh, representatives of the left uh, who were, uh, who um, rose in positions in the Ninth Congress would be eventually be divided against each other. So uh, smart guys of the right were sp uh, splitting the left. Uh, the, the left was split the same way that the followers of Stalin were split uh, by Khrushchev in his rise to power. So that is a major thing that occurred. Um, actually, the Cultural Revolution was effective only from 1966 to possibly uh, 19, only up to 1972. Uh, but uh, by the time, by the year 1972, the rightists, uh, were already being able to manipulate uh, uh, all, uh, uh, the situation and collaboration with the centrist. Um, you see, uh, the uh, the death of Lim Piao uh, is uh, uh, how it occurred. It's unbelievable, no? You know, you uh, Lim Piao and all his uh, uh, top brass. Uh, getting killed in one plane with a plane dis destined for Olympia's main enemy, uh, the Soviet the social imperialism. And the plane was supposed to be, um, the plane was obviously an autopilot and uh, it dropped in, uh, uh, somewhere in Mongolia. And why should Olympia be, uh, be uh, fleeing to the Soviet Union? And then by 72, Nixon could visit uh, uh, the China and uh, uh, foreign policy issues were used to turn around um, to turn around uh, the trend in the, in the GPCR. And uh, um, there was a reinterpretation of the first world. Uh, it used to be uh, said that the uh, uh, first world was capital the 
the developed cap capitalist countries, but then uh, that was reinterpreted as um, uh, the world of the superpowers. And um, it looked like it was a smart thing to do to play off one superpower against the other. But then Deng Xiaoping uh, and the rightists made use of the call for modernization, um, mm. possible only by uh, having a rapprochement and collaboration with the US. Uh, from 1972 onwards, the rightist trend continued to uh, proceeded to um, to weaken uh, the uh, the left uh, side of Chinese politics. And but that there would still be twists and turns. Eh? Deng Xiaoping would fall in 1976, but within 1976, eh, he would also recover after the death of Mao. He fell after the death of Chao Enlai. Uh, the one who protected him and uh, brought him, rehabilitated him. And uh, then um, in the, when Mao uh, died in, in September 1976, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Deng Xiaoping would be able to take the initiative in, comp in combination with the uh, centrist. It's a long, sto uh, long story, yes. you know? <laughs> I think uh, I would recommend... Uh, uh, your reading, uh, my article, I think uh, it's my uh, long uh, review of uh, the book of uh, Pao Yuching. Uh, the, that's the most extensive thing that I have written recently. I see. All right, Tito, that's, uh, that's really uh, very informative, no? uh, history that you've said. But let's move on, Tito, Tito, to the next question from our audience. You know? From Siswa Santoso, to which extent can we consider the revolutionary potential amongst the disappointed young Muslim due to the misery created but by the neoliberals? Mm -hmm. there, there is revolutionary potential among the Muslims uh, because they're disappointed, young and old, no? they're, they're disappointed uh, uh, because uh, uh, of neoliberalism uh, inflicting so much misery uh, on them. And at the same time, you know, the, uh, the Muslims are being caricatured as terrorists, no? Mm. The, it's yes. the U.S. US imperialism which is systematically... Um, uh, created uh, uh, the campaign to put up uh, uh, Islamic fundamentalism as an as a tool uh, of anti-communism, no? Mm -hmm. And then, so you know, uh, Bin Laden uh, cooperated closely with the CIA. Um, especially in the fight against the Soviet social imperialists. You know, they, there was a good target for them. But then, um, in general, in the Middle East, as well as in Indonesia, you know, uh, the, the uh, U.S. imperialism has always made it a point to, uh, to support the uh, Muslim rightists and then uh, to promote a fundamental Islamic fundamentalism. So the uh, the U.S. supported the Darul Islam, a rightist group, and then the Mashume in Indonesia. And um, similar groups would be supported in the, the Middle East, though. No? So, but anyway, mm, uh, up to this time, you know, the U.S. has been the one creating the jihadist groups, no? the um, Islamic State, um, and then, uh, oh, well, Al-Qaeda, Islamic State, uh, 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 and so many other jihadist groups, you know? Um, the, the CIA, and sometimes uh, uh, the CIA works with Mossad and even the Saudi intelligence to create this uh, 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 so-called Islamic jihadist groups. Uh, but anyway, 
neoliberalism as an exploitative economic policy has also damaged the uh, um, um, uh, the Muslim people, the people in Islamic countries, and uh, the uh, revolutionary potential of them of people uh, of Islamic believers uh, can again be uh, developed. You know. Um, in the struggle against colonialism, mm -hmm. uh, there was a combination of uh, uh, bourgeois nationalist, communist, and uh, Islamic religionist. Uh, mm -hmm. In Indonesia, uh, the manifestation of that would be Nasakom, Nasakom, no? And also in in many. Um, uh, uh, Middle East countries, especially where the secular state um, developed, there was a combination of uh, uh, Islamic uh, uh, religionists, communists, as well as bourgeois nationalists. Uh, uh, that's <clears throat> what uh, Saddam tried to maintain, and in Syria, that's still uh, that is still being maintained to some extent. Um, in 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 the, um, uh, Libya would be an outstanding example where you know uh, the Gaddafi could uh, not cooperate with local communists, but he could cooperate with foreign communists. No, uh, but anyway, in general, uh, before the U.S. succeeded in subverting uh, Islam and. Uh, Misrepresenting it, uh, the, the, you have this uh, uh, manipulation of uh, Islamic groups uh, uh, for serving uh, imperialist interest. So the revolutionary potential of the people uh, yeah. who uh, in Islamic countries is is high, and uh, even as uh, when they uh, pronouncedly stand for their faith, no, uh, especially in the case of um, of uh, Iran, where you know the Shia uh, is the uh, part of Islam uh, uh, that uh, is predominant uh, in Iran, uh, it it stands up against uh, against. Um, uh, U.S. imperialism and uh, Israeli Zionism. Uh, they, they are sta the, the Iranians are standing up better than the Sunnis, uh, who are supposed to be historically closer uh, to the Palestinians. Yes. Um, yeah, Tito. And that's um, next question, naman, Tito. From uh, I think to our audience, uh, no, we are now closing the floors for the question and answer. Thank you so much for everyone who have participated and actively joined the discussion for sending in your questions. You know? And of course, for listening in um, with the discussion and being with us. I hope you have learned a lot and uh, there's a lot of takeaway uh, for this discussion. For the last question, Tito, um, there is always the fear when the Philippines is constructing a socialist government that the U.S. will do its best to crush the revolutionary efforts like what they are doing with Venezuela and the U.S. back coup uh, in uh, Latin America. So in the Philippines, what can we do to stop it? It's true. If uh, the People's Democratic Revolution would win and um, um, uh, proceeds to the Socialist Revolution, the U.S. will do everything uh, in order to uh, uh, crush the revolutionary uh, efforts of, uh, of the Filipino people, uh, as uh, uh, U.S. has done uh, against Cuba and uh, quite recently against uh, uh, Venezuela. Yeah. But uh, you see, uh, in the case of um, uh, Cuba, it's so close to the U.S. Uh, physically, 90 miles away, but the, the U.S has not been able to crush Cuba up to now. Uh, it has survived for uh, 
uh, several decades despite the uh, embargo and so many um, um, military provocations. And um, uh, Cuba can be an example of how to mobilize the people against uh, U.S. aggression. And um, Venezuela is also standing up, no? Uh, despite its lesser level of experience in revolutionary struggle, you know? Uh, it comes, it came from, you know, uh, adoption of someone in the military like Hugo Chavez, uh, taking the social democratic line. I do not know uh, how far it can survive uh, uh, the attacks of the U.S., but so far it is holding up and uh, it deserves support in that uh, regard. Now, the Philippines um, uh, has uh, outstanding achievements in making revolution. Uh, you know, the, uh, the People's Democratic Revolution through protracted people's war has... Uh, um, has uh, been gaining strength in the Philippines, despite, you know, the, um, the revisionist betrayal of socialism in uh, the Soviet Union and China, uh, and despite uh, the application, the imposition of neoliberalism on the entire world. So the Philippines has survived. And, um, uh, but uh, if it wins, uh, because, you know, the Philippines is highly priced as a source of cheap uh, uh, raw materials, minerals and agricultural products. That's why it has always been kept, uh, uh, kept out of, uh, you know, uh, 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 schemes initiated by the U.S. to promote some amount of industrialization so that it can be called a newly industrialized. It is kept... Uh, uh, really as a semi-colonial and semi-feudal country because uh, that's the way how the U.S. can draw uh, bigger profits from the Philippines. Now, if it um, goes out of the orbit of the U.S., if the revolution succeeds, then you can expect um, the U.S. to do to, uh, to uh, adopt stronger measures against the revolution. And I, I suppose um, right now, uh, this uh, uh, this uh, anti-terrorism campaign, so-called, this uh, campaign of state terrorism being carried out by Duterte is uh, approved by the U.S., especially by uh, the outgoing Trump regime, yeah. because the, uh, the Philippine revolution is feared as a major uh, uh, revolutionary phenomenon that in can inspire other people. Um, and uh, it would be uh, to uh, the great advantage of the Filipino people and the cause of the world proletarian revolution if um, the people in Indonesia would rise up, no? And if uh, uh, the revolutionary forces, the Maoists especially, uh, in India, Nepal, and other countries in South Asia would uh, would develop. Then um, this, uh, the spread of this uh, armed revolutionary movements would serve to help the Philippine Revolution, so that that would lessen the uh, the danger of the U.S. being able to crush uh, the Philippine Revolution when uh, when it is about to win the People's Democratic Revolution or when it starts the socialist revolution. Um, in the Philippines uh, it can be described as right on time eh, in making revolution because the stage of its development is such that uh, it jibes now eh, uh, with the uh, unraveling of neoliberalism and the global spread eh, of anti-imperialist and democratic struggles as well as uh, uh, spread of uh, uh, armed revolution, especially in, um, uh, in uh, South Asia and in, uh, in certain specific countries like Kurdistan um, uh, and some countries in Latin America. 
So um, I think um, uh, the U.S. Uh, is uh, incapable of, uh, of destroying the revolutionary movement, even if it tries to do so now through the instrumentality of uh, Duterte. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, the attempts to destroy the Communist Party is now... Uh, uh, the attempts to destroy the Communist Party of the Philippines and the revolutionary movement of the Philippines are now taken over uh, by... Uh, are now taken... Uh, are now... Uh, taken over, not taken... are now um, overtaken, rather. Are now overtaken uh, by... Uh, by the big fall of the world capitalist system. Uh, you have now a situation worse than the depression in the 1930s, and um, this is aggravated by COVID-19 pandemic, and uh, the Philippine economy and the Philippine uh, government um, uh, are now bankrupt precisely because of its obedience uh, to imperialist economic policies and uh, uh, also precisely because there is so much bureaucratic corruption and military overspending in this attempt to destroy the CPP. They are all stupid, those who are in power in the Philippines. Um, they, uh, they have uh, made it clear that they do not want any peace negotiations. And I suppose that is fine for the armed revolutionaries because that uh, proves the justness of the revolutionary struggle. I see. Thank you so much, Tito, uh, for um, for discussing, you know, for being with us in this discussion. Uh, I think that is the last question that um, has been sent. And again, thank you to audience natin who participated and um, watch uh, and be and and been with us. Uh, all throughout the discussion. Another thing that we would also like to thank, there's a lot of, um, during the Christmas Christmas break, we would like to thank all the binge watchers and who've watched our ND Line episode. Thank you so much for, um, you know, um, going back and uh, learning again from the discussion. And this has meant um, uh, really well, or this has meant uh, much for Anakbaya in Europa. Thank you so much for all of you who uh, supported National Democratic Line Online School. Ayan. Again, natapos na naman po ang ating discussion towards National Democratic Line Online, Marxism, Leninism, on proletarian stand and outlook. Abangan nyo po ulit kami next week para sa ating susunod na discussion. I think um, ang ating uh, susunod discussion would be about um, I think our susunod, uh, susunod natin discussion is the historical and dialectical materialism. No, a review about um, historical and dialectical materialism that is on the 31st of January next. Um, that is um, next uh, Sunday. Um, sorry. Um, Sorry, ang susunod pala nating discussion would be political economy and imperialism. I know that is on the 24th, next Sunday po yan, no? Um, and we have um, a guest speaker, abangan po natin yan, announcement on the Facebook page of Anak Bayan Europa. Ayan po. Um, again, abangan nyo po kami next week, same time, same place, ano, dito po yan sa Facebook. Um, make sure to note this on your calendars at mag-catch ng updates din sa FB group natin na National Democratic Line Online. Huwag kalimutan mag-like at i-share, mag imbita upang sumali sa ating kamakabuluhan at nakamumulat at na, 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 um, dito sa ND Line Online School Series with Tito Jo. Maraming salamat po ulit sa pakikibahagi. Tito Jo, baka meron po kayong um, gustong sabihin sa ating audience bago po natin finally close itong discussion. Maraming sa salamat din sa iyo. Kangelo for acting as the host and uh, uh, maraming salamat sa ating tagapakinig. Uh, uh, umaasa ko na uh, uh, lalakok uh, sila muli sa susunod na episode. Ayan. Maraming salamat ulit, Tito Jo. Maraming thank you, thank you very much for um, being with the discussion. Ulit, ako po si Kasamang Christ, kasama si Prof. Joma, mapagpalayang hapon, gabi uh, sa ating lahat. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you. Kay tagal ko rin nabuhay sa pantasya. Ang buhay raw ng tao'y kapalaran ng may pasya. Ang tagal ko rin nabuhay sa pantasya. Ang buhay raw ng tao'y kapalaran ng may pasya. Tagal ko rin na buhay sa paniniwala. Kapalaran daw ng tao'y darating na lang ko sa o ito'y ibibigay ng isang batala. Ngunit ito pala'y isa lamang ha-ha-ha. Bye. 